that causes division in his body. The Lord is in the process and will soon complete the process of burning with fire off everything, everything that causes division in his body. A kingdom divided cannot stand. And in the end, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the Lord shall stand. Who is the word of the Lord? Yeshua. Yeshua. At the end of this thing, he is the one remaining standing. Everything else, everything else, burns away daily. The Spirit of the Lord seeks a unified body. Spiritual unity doesn't just mean getting along. But the Spirit of the Lord hovers over the body, seeking a spirit of unity, because that's where the anointing is. As it says in the psalm, that's the oil flowing off the beard, when, how good and pleasant when brothers dwell together in unity. So he seeks, he seeks unity, kind of like, and if, he, and if he sees disunity, he will turn up the heat. Just like our body, our immune systems will seek out a virus, and if it finds a virus, it will turn up the heat. So will our Father. If he sees disunity, division in his body, he will turn up the heat. And if he sees it again, he will turn it up more. And he will turn it up more. And if he sees it in one generation, he'll turn it up in the next. He will turn it up, turn up the heat until it is seven times hotter. Where at that temperature, nothing, not of him, can survive. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire seven times hotter than Nebuchadnezzar turned it, I don't know how well they got along before that moment. I don't know if they were friends. I mean, if they're righteous Jews, they probably argued a lot. I don't know if they really liked each other. They were in Babylon. They had to serve the king. It probably wasn't a really good situation. When the fire was turned seven times hotter, anything that may have caused this unity between these three did not matter anymore. So that's what Adonai will do. He will turn up the heat so much so that the guards, the officers in Babylon who threw them into the fire, died doing so. Because nothing about an eye, nothing not about an eye can survive at that temperature. Do you understand that? He turned it up so hot that even the Babylonian pagan guards died throwing them into it. And at that temperature, looking into the fire, who do we see? We see one as the Son of God. Because at that temperature... In fact, I believe in the, in the books of the prophets that is the only time that incarnate Yeshua shows up in Babylon, in the diaspora. But it took him turning up the temperature to really hot, seven times hotter, for Yeshua to show up in the fire. Anything that causes division in his body will burn off. Because Yeshua will not give his glory to another. He will not give his glory to another. He is a jealous God. Hallelujah! That rises up to take the glory from the one who deserves to be on the throne. He will turn up the temperature again and again and again. We talk about tribulation that is coming. Paul... Uh, shared with me something from Corey Ten Boom, and it spoke about how tribulation comes to the unrighteous, but persecution comes to the righteous. Nice. So none of us are exempt from this thing. So 
what is the what is the process, what is the purpose of bringing tribulation in the end and turning up the heat? And what is the what is the purpose of bringing bringing persecution to his body? It's all the same purpose at the end of the day to burn off what's not of him. That's the purpose for the unrighteous and the righteous. That process of dying daily is going to get turned up so we die even more quickly. So nothing, not of him, will remain. So the one who is unrighteous and the one who is righteous, and I put these air quotes around both these things, both will be redeemed and all that's left is the one who will stand at the end. The word of God, the living word of God. Mountains will fall. Hills will be removed. But he will not be shaken. Everything that causes division, he will seek and he will burn off. And he is in the process of doing that. In the beginning, Adam and Eve, they were in the garden. There was complete unity between them, between them and God. There was no disunity, but once sin entered, all of a sudden the disunity, the, the separation, the division started to happen. She made me do it! <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 it was the serpent! All of the finger pointing and the blaming all of a sudden started. That was the first marital fight. <laughs> After they left the guard, she probably went, I can't believe you blamed me for that. <laughs> Somebody was sleeping on the couch that night. They weren't having fun that night. So the sin comes in and all of a sudden we start to see this disunity and it even goes to their children with Cain and Abel where Cain is jealous of Abel and the offerings and all of a sudden you start to see this thing, this, 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 this separation, this spirit, this evil spirit that seeks to separate. Jealousy is being burnt off. Is being burnt off. But then how do you conquer this thing? I mean, I don't know, I went to Cain and said, hey, sin is crouching at your door, but you can master it. Well, that's kind of a sucky place to be. You know, like, okay, i got to master it. So then generations later, I don't know, brings in the Torah. It's like, I'm the Torah. I'm going to give you the tools to master sin. Because I'm going to tell you what sin is, and I'm going to tell you what righteousness is. So now you get to know what is sin, what is righteous, so you're going to conquer sin that way. We screw that up too. That's why Yeshua comes in with a better covenant, where he takes the sin that's crouching at our door, crumbles it up, and throws it away. And he's in the process of doing that. That is still something he is doing. It is not fully complete. It will be complete in the time at the end when he comes. But he is in the process of taking everything that separates us, the sins that crouch at our door that we cannot master, and throwing it into the lake of fire once and for all. And that's what he's in the process of doing. Anything that causes division in his kingdom, he will not stand for. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah! Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor Love your, hallelujah. as yourself. Woo. Yeshua said that is the commandment that's like the first, which is to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And he didn't just say love your neighbor. He said love your neighbor as if they are you. Love your neighbor as if they are you. Yeshua, when he gave the golden rule and said, do unto others as you have them do to you, he was alluding to that commandment as well. Your neighbor is you.